praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to our Bible study. Uh, this Bible study is going to be on sin and the fall and its consequences. And I'm using the King James Version of the Bible, and I'm also using an outline uh, David by David Bernard uh, to carry on the uh, discussion. I'm going to start with the definition of sin. It's an act of violation of God's law. Uh, and it can be a commission or omission. That means that um, it can be something you omitted that will cause sin, as well as uh, acting out. Uh, uh, I want to talk about the, the nature uh, the principal law that produces sinful acts. Uh, Romans 7, 23, and 1 John 1, 8. I'm not going to uh, go to all of the scripture, but I'm going to uh, give you the scripture so that uh, you can go back and uh, study uh, what we... Um, didn't uh, go over. Uh, so, uh, going to go to the book of Roman and the uh, seventh chapter in the 23rd verse, uh, book of Romans. Okay, seventh chapter, and going to read the 23rd verse and it reads but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members and the uh, origination of sin was developed in the heart of Lucifer Okay, so he was a free moral agent who had the power to create a moral condition in his own life that did not previously exist. Okay, and also voluntarily it was accepted by Adam and Eve. Uh, they also had the power to create a new moral condition uh, as far as man was concerned. God is not responsible for sin. God is not responsible for evil today. Uh, human bought evil on themselves. God has no responsibility uh, to correct human mistakes. God has graciously provided redemption through Jesus Christ, just as sin entered by one. And so the Bible let us know that salvation comes by one. Um, it affects, uh, it had on human nature uh, uh, originally, um, humans were, or Adam rather, and he was innocent and sinless, but God gave them a free will, okay? Um, it's necessary for gen genuine love and communion with God. You need a free will to have a genuine love and communion with God. Uh, so by definition, uh, we have the capacity uh, to choose sin. Okay, so man is now sinful. And so if it had not been for the grace of God, hadn't been for uh, Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross, uh, we would not have a way out. And so I want to talk some about the fall and its consequences. Uh, fall and its consequences. And uh, humans have a sin for nature. Okay. Uh, it's inherited, it's compulsive, and it uh, dominates. Uh, so if we go to uh, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 3. Okay, I'm going to go to Romans uh, 
chapter 3, and I would like to start reading. Actually, I'd like to start reading at the first verse and uh, read all the way down through the 11th verse. And it reads, What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of the circumcision? Uh, much every way, chiefly because that unto them was committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, and let, but let every man be a liar, as is it written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sin, and might overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God has more abundant through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderous reported, that as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have therefore proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand. There is none that seek after God. Amen. So Paul is letting us know that whether you are Jew or Gentile, we are still in the same condition. Okay. And so if you do not accept Christ, uh, you are in the uh, same condition. And grace is not a license to sin. Uh, when you're talking about the grace of God, uh, it can only be obtained through uh, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so, um, the next uh, scripture I wanted to use was Titus. Uh, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And so, uh, it is through Jesus Christ that we have this uh, wonderful grace that we stand. Okay. Um, and it inevitably lead to sinful acts. Okay. And we're still talking about the fall and its consequences. Okay. And so Romans 5, I want to go to Romans uh, chapter 5 and I'm going to start reading at the 8th verse and read down through 19 but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for it for if when we were enemies we reconcile unto God and so if God died for us while we were yet sinners, uh, he had that much love uh, toward us, then he says, well, what about now? Uh, that's what he's saying. What about now that um, uh, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. So Jesus Christ, we received the atonement. He paid the penalty uh, for our sin. Now thank the Lord for that. And wherefore as by one man sin entered the world, that is through Adam, but by uh, uh, also it says, and so uh, by this one man, sin entered unto the world, and death by sin, and so death passed unto all men. That is why men die. It is because of sin. For that all have sinned. Uh, for, unto the, uh, for until the law, sin was in the world, 
but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Okay? And, and need, nevertheless, death reigned. Okay, I lost my place. My, my, my uh, phone skipped on me. Okay. Uh, so, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not sinned after the multitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come, but not, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abound unto many, and now as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to con condemnation, but the free gift is of you have to excuse me a minute, I keep pushing the wrong thing on this phone. Uh, by one man disobedient Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense may abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And remember, they misunderstood Paul when he was telling them about grace. Where he, when he was telling them that where sin abound, grace much do much more abound. Uh, there was some that was uh, of a natural mind that uh, had out that Paul had said that it was okay to sin because God was going to take care of the rest. But that wasn't what Paul said. Paul was, was talking about that where uh, sin abound, grace do much more abound. But he also let you know that uh, heaven forbid that he would say such a thing because when you're talking about the grace of God, you're also talking about the power of God that is able to lift you up out of that sin. And so God has the power to keep uh, one from uh, getting in a habit of keep on sin. Okay. And so. Um, we're still talking about the fall. And the consequences. Of sin. Okay. God law shows. That what sin is. And shows that all are sinners. Okay. Uh, on their own. Humans cannot become righteous. Or either seek God. Okay. In other words, if it, if it wasn't for God, then you would not even uh, have the choice or you would not have that draw that God gives to bring us to him. Uh, if we go to the book of uh, Romans again, the uh, third chapter, book of Romans, and I'm going to go uh, to the third chapter of Romans. I think I've been there uh, before, <laughs> but the 10th, I want the 10th and the 12th verse. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand, there is none that seek after God. And God give grace to all to enable them to choose. I remember uh, Pastor Dawkins used to say that it's the saint that really have the choice. Uh, and I think that's what she was talking about, is that it gives you that ability. Uh, see, when you don't know God, you really don't have that ability to choose as you ought to choose. Uh, you have to let God bring you into it. Uh, but once you know God, 
then you choose to continue to follow him. Okay, so if we go to uh, the Titus and the second chapter of Titus and the 11th verse, it says, for the grace of God that brought salvation, and I think we've read that before, has appeared unto uh, all men and teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Uh, human has been restricted by sin but people can still respond to God in faith. Okay. Um, the curse of sin, if we go back to the book of Genesis, in the third chapter of Genesis, it let us know uh, in the very beginning uh, the curse associated uh, with sin. And so uh, if we go to Genesis verses 14 through 15 and it read and the Lord God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thing thou shalt be cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field unto thy belly that thou shalt go and dust that shall thou eat all the days of thy life and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy heel, thy head, I'm sorry, and thy shall bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and in thy, de thy desire shall be to thine husband. And he shall ro rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thy hast hearkened unto the voice of the wife, and hath eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken... For thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. Okay, so that was the curse that was put upon the serpent, uh, that Satan, and on the woman and on the man. And it affected all creation. It didn't just affect the human race. Sin affect uh, all creation. And so if we go to, again, to the book of Roman and the 8th chapter and read the 22nd verse, it would let us know that, um, for we know that the whole creation groan and travailed in pain together until now, and not only they, but we ourselves also, which has the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then we do it with patient wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities, Okay, and so God is dealing with the spiritual man, but he letting us know that uh, we still haven't had the redemption of our body. And that is going to come uh, with the rapture. That is going to come when our body is changed uh, and match uh, who we really are. Okay, and so sickness and death in humanity because of sin. If we stay in the book of Romans and go to the fifth, fifth chapter of Romans 
and read the 12th verse. Okay. Uh, fifth chapter Romans. And then if we go down to, to verse 12. Whereby is by one man sinner enter unto the world, and death by sin, and so uh, death pass unto all men, and that all have sinned. Okay. And so we had read that earlier too for another uh, section of the lesson. And it also bring forth death. The best description that I found for death uh, is it, really not correct to look upon death as the end or something or, or as non-existing. But the Bible has a very uh, good definition of what uh, death serpents is. Okay. And so if we go to... Uh, the book of James in the uh, second chapter. Um, let's see, book of James, the second chapter. And then we're going to read verse 26. We're going to go down to about verse, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, verse 26, and it reads, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is, anytime there is a separation, the spirit leaves the body, that is a death. Um, you remember when Paul got beaten, or uh, they think that's when Paul was talking about when he was in, whether he was in the body, out of the body, he didn't know. God had gave him a revelation. He had took him up to the third heaven and he had seen things that uh, it wasn't lawful for him to talk about. Um, so that's what he was saying basically, that he didn't know whether he was in or out of the body or he didn't know whether he was dead or alive. And um, some theologians say that they believe that that is when they uh, stoned him and throwed him out of the city for dead. It's when he had that type of revelation. But anyway, it, 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 that is, I believe, the best way to look at what death is. It just is when uh, the Lord was hanging on the cross and the Bible said he gave up the ghost. In other words, when the spirit left that body, that's death. Uh, don't look at death as being the end. Uh, the death, death actually is the beginning of something new, something, uh, uh, it may be something that uh, scary to some people, uh, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, physically, it is a separation of the spirit and the soul from the body. And so, uh, spiritually, it is a, a, a spiritual death. That is when uh, you are separated from the Spirit of God. That is why it is so uh, awesome that we have the Spirit of God working in our lives. We know we're alive uh, when we have the Spirit of God. Anytime there's a separation from God, you're not spiritually, spiritually alive. And so that what gives us life is when we have the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so uh, anytime you have the spirit of Christ, you have life in you. Uh, so there is also an eternal life, eternal life. You don't want to be eternally separated uh, from God. Uh, so uh, if you don't want to be uh, eternally separated from God, then we have to do what God told us to do and to be obedient to his word. Because the Bible let us know Jesus tastes death for everyone. Every man, woman, and child is able uh, to come to Christ for salvation. 
Okay, if we go to the book of Matthew, um, Okay, go to the book of Matthew. The 27th chapter, 46 verse. And after the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbatha, Abatha. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there when they heard this said, This is this man called Elias. Of course, he was not calling Elias, he was. Uh, calling upon the Lord. And so uh, also if we go to uh, the book of Hebrew uh, the second chapter and the ninth verse Hebrews second chapter and the ninth verse but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, for it became him for whom all are all things, that by whom are all things, and bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of thy salvation perfect through suffering. Amen. And so, uh, salvation don't eliminate either. I guess I should say that. Salvation do not eliminate the sinful nature in life. 1 John 1.8, uh, we're not going to go there. I'm about winding down. Uh, but it's talk about... Uh, you may not be in a habit of sinning, uh, but we still sin. E even saints of God have to realize that there's time in our weakness uh, that we may sin. And so we have an advocate uh, with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It do not give us a license, don't get me wrong, it don't give us a license to sin, uh, but it keeps the, the, the adversary from uh, putting a guilt trip on you uh, salvation do not give us power to overcome uh, the sinful nature. Salvation give us a new nature, God's spirit. That's why men must be born again. You can't just renovate something. Sometimes you have to take that thing down and do a new. And so that's why when you're talking about salvation, he's talking about a new creature. He's talking about a new man. Uh, salvation give us freedom of the will to choose between the nature of sin or the nature of God. And we ought to be wanting the nature of God. Okay. And so when this thing's all over, uh, God is in the process. God, salvation reverses all those consequences that I was talking about. Uh, so uh, may God continue to bless you, watch over you, continue to pray. Uh, continue in your uh, personal devotion and um, pray for uh, our world leaders and our spiritual leaders in Jesus name have a blessed day